Also tonight, President Trump's new warning to Kim Jong-un is raising a lot of questions among members of both parties. Uh, let's bring in Republican Senator James Risch. He's a key member of both the Intelligence and Foreign Relations Committees. Uh, Senator, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. Glad to be here. All right, so you just heard the president say that if North Korea makes any more threats, they will be met with, in his words, fire, fury, and the power, the likes of which the world has never seen before. What does this mean to you? Is he threatening war? Well, I don't know that he's threatening war, but certainly uh, the person we have as president of the United States right now uh, is uh, a person who says what's on his mind. Uh, he tweets it, uh, and uh, he's very clear on uh, what he's thinking, whether you agree or disagree with him. Uh, he's usually pretty good at communicating what's on his mind, and he certainly uh, did today. Obviously, the, uh, uh, we have a Secretary of State, and we have a really good sec uh, Secretary of State uh, in Rex Tillerson. And uh, his, uh, his job is uh, to work diplomacy uh, as best it can be worked. But as your uh, reporters uh, just put on the table, uh, there, uh, there's a there's a long ways away uh, between the parties. It's really hard to overstate what a serious situation that this is. Uh, there's some keys here, but uh, this is a very serious situation. Because the president seems to be drawing a red line, uh, uh, not as if uh, North Korea has to actually take some military move that would provoke the U.S. But he says North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. You know, Senator, that the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, he's going to continue the rhetorical threats against the United States. Uh, there's no stopping that, right? It's a dangerous situation. Uh, there's, there's absolutely no question about this. This is a president who is very dedicated to uh, uh, protecting the United States. I've spoken with him about it. He has a passion for it. He means it. Uh, and uh, as has been said, all options are on the table. Uh, it, it, it's hard, like I say, to overstate how serious this is and, uh, and the problems uh, that, that uh, we can face. And the problem is you have a despot over there who, uh, like Saddam Hussein, these guys start to uh, believe, the, believe their, own, uh, <laughs> their own baloney and, and really uh, misassess the situation and wind up in, but, a, in a very bad but, place. But, Senator, you know that the president's not simply tweeting uh, this is a carefully considered statement that he made. He knew he was going to be asked about the latest North Korean developments, and he came out and he issued this statement. He said it. Uh, it's being played all over the world right now. Uh, basically, he's threatening nuclear war against North Korea if they continue these threats. Well, I'm, I have no doubt, Wolf, that he is doing his best to convey to uh, North Korea uh, exactly what's on his mind. And uh, one should never forget uh, that this is a man who, in, in the first six months in office, has pulled the trigger twice already. Uh, and uh, he's a man who, in his pocket, has the uh, nuclear codes. Uh, th this is a serious but situation. But is it smart? Is and, it smart? Uh, and I agree with you. What's on his mind. I agree with you, Senator. This is extremely dangerous right now. But given an unstable, unpredictable regime in Pyongyang, is it smart for the president to be issuing a red line warning like this? Well, well if I, I'm not going to sit here and criticize the president. He is the president of the United States. He has said what's on his mind. I think the people in uh, Pyongyang need to listen very carefully to what he said, and they're going to have to make a decision as to uh, how they want to go forward. Look, there's a key here, and the key is the Chinese. Uh, the North Koreans are not going to listen to us. They're not going to be uh, moved by anything that anybody says. Uh, obviously, it's uh, important that the president uh, convey to them uh, what posture that they're in. But yeah. the key is in the pocket of you, the you Chinese. Know, and Senator, they, Senator, I, Senator, I, I just want to point out uh, you're, you're unwilling to criticize the president. John McCain, your Republican colleague from Arizona, he, he said this. He said, I take exception to the president's comments because you've got to be sure that you can do what you say you're going to do. In other words, the old walk softly but carry a big stick. So here's the question. If the North Koreans tomorrow issue a threat, a rhetorical threat to the United States, given what the president has just said, must the U.S. then respond or seem to be blink blinking? Well, I... <laughs> Well, if that's a hypothetical question, I guess the issue would be what uh, what action do they take uh, 
talk is talk. Uh, what action they take is will be important. I'm also not going to criticize John McCain, uh, obviously, and uh, he uh, he has his thoughts on these things. But uh, uh, look, they, I th people need to listen to what uh, uh, President Trump is saying and. Uh, uh, Pyongyang is going to have to make their decision, and uh, whether they're going to willing to take that risk is going to be up to them. And uh, it, it is a serious situation. I just want to read to you, because uh, we did some historical checking to see how extraordinary the statement from the president actually is, Senator. We go back to August 6, 1945. This is President Truman issuing a warning to the Japanese. Uh, and, and I'll read it to you. It was to spare the Japanese people from utter destruction that the ultimatum of July 26th was issued at Potsdam. Their leaders promptly rejected that ultimatum. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. Behind this air attack will follow sea and land forces in such numbers and power as they have not yet seen and with the fighting skill of which they are already well aware. This is uh, after uh, Hiroshima, before Nagasaki. You know what happened. That's the last time we heard a president of the United States issue a direct threat to an adversary like that. Your reaction? Well, I, I, again, if I were uh, sitting in Pyongyang, I would uh, listen to what you just said uh, with the historical research background and put this in perspective and decide whether you, they're going to have to decide whether they, they want to uh, proceed with uh, the road uh, that they're going down. Um, look, uh, uh, President Truman uh, is the only person in history of the world who's ordered a nuclear attack. Uh, this is a president uh, who is facing a uh, challenge which is uh, very different uh, than what we've seen before, but uh, it is a, uh, a situation that could be just as extreme as uh, what the United States was facing uh, at uh, the time that President Truman did that. So, uh, look, this is, uh, it, you can't overstate how, how serious this is. And, and not only that, but the weapons that uh, President uh, Truman used uh, were much, much smaller uh, and, and much, much less in power than the uh, nuclear weapons that the United States has today. No, we, uh, and, of course, uh, North Korea has nothing like that. Well, North Korea could have 30, maybe 60 nuclear bombs. They may have miniaturized those, war, uh, those bombs on warheads, on intercontinental ballistic missiles. I've got to take a break, but very quickly, how many nuclear bombs do you believe North Korea right now has? You know, as you know, Wolf, I'm, I wouldn't be at liberty to, uh, to say that. I, I do have an assessment of that, but I can't. It, it's obviously classified. All right, stand by, uh, Senator. There's more we're going to discuss. We're following the breaking news, and as you correctly point out, this is an extremely ominous situation that the U.S. and its allies are facing right now. We'll be right back. We're back with Senator Risha, the Intelligence Committee. We're following the breaking news on North Korea. It is significant potential ability by the North Koreans to attack the United States with a nuclear weapon. Uh, U.S. intelligence now believes the regime has produced a nuclear warhead small, small enough to fit on a long-range ballistic missile. Uh, Senator, I want you to stand by. We're going to continue our interview, but I quickly want to go to our White House correspondent, Sarah Murray. Uh, Sarah, President Trump is reacting to this brace, uh, breaking story with a truly extraordinary new warning to Kim Jong-un's regime. That's right, Wolf, and we know that over the last couple of days, the president has huddled with top U.S. officials to discuss the threats from North Korea. One thing that those officials have made clear is that all the options are on the table, including the military option. That seemed to be something President Trump wanted to get across in his own words today. Thank you. President Trump issuing a sharp warning today to North Korea. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. The president saying dire consequences lie ahead if North Korea's nuclear threats continue. 
The warning coming as the president injects a dash of policy to his New Jersey retreat. It is horrible what's going on with opioid and other drugs. Vowing to combat the opioid crisis as Trump faces a credibility crisis of his own. Six months into his presidency, just 38 percent of Americans approve of the job Trump is doing. 56 percent disapprove, according to the latest CNN polls. But it's clear the new president is already facing a credibility gap, with 60 percent of Americans saying they don't believe Trump is honest and trustworthy. Add to that, only a quarter of Americans say they believe all or most of the official communications from the White House, compared to 30 percent who say they don't trust anything they hear from the president's office. A series of questionable moves by the administration may only fuel American skepticism like this recommendation from Department of Agriculture officials to drop the term climate change and instead refer to weather extremes, according to an email obtained by CNN. The guidance comes under a president who has frequently questioned the scientific consensus behind humans' impact on rising global temperatures. But Trump has also faced scrutiny for his handling of classified information. On Tuesday, he retweeted a Fox News report based on anonymous sources who leaked the information. It declared, U.S. spy satellites detect North Korea moving anti-ship cruise missiles to patrol boat. This is what Nikki Haley, the ambassador to the United Nations, had to say about that issue. I can't. I can't talk about anything that's classified, and if that's in the newspaper, that's a shame. But the president apparently has no qualms about once again sharing potentially classified information. In July, Trump tweeted about a covert CIA program to arm Syrian rebels after the Washington Post reported the administration planned to end it. Sources say Trump also shared highly classified information with Russian officials when he invited them into the Oval Office in May. It is alarming the casualness with which President Trump shares classified information. Now, one of the things we have not heard much from the president on today is the Russia investigation. But his chief counsel, John Dowd, did a fascinating interview with USA Today where he explained that Trump actually told his lawyer that he appreciated the work that special counsel Robert Mueller was doing on the Russia investigation and asked his lawyer to pass that message along. Trump's lawyer said he did just that. Clearly a very different tone behind the scenes than what we've seen from the president publicly when it comes to the issue of this investigation. Wolf. Sarah Murray uh, with the president in New Jersey uh, today. Sarah, thanks very much. We're back with Senator James Risch. Uh, Senator, uh, you're a member of the Intelligence Committee. Do you think it's appropriate for the president to be passing along messages uh, through his legal team, first of all, to the special counsel, Robert Mueller, as uh, USA Today is now reporting? You know, I'm not familiar with that at all, uh, uh, Wolf. I, I haven't heard... Uh, that there were such communications. I didn't see the story, and uh, I, I sure don't want to speculate on it. Yeah, no, the uh, president's uh, uh, attorney that uh, now works for him said that uh, the president asked him to express his appreciation to the special counsel, uh, Robert Mueller, for presumably for all the important work that he's doing. It, uh, it seems to be in marked contrast to some of the other statements we've heard from the White House about what uh, Robert Mueller is doing. But let me move on to that other item in the, in, in that we just saw uh, in Sarah Murray's report, the president retweeting that Fox News report that clearly contained some classified information on U.S. spying on North Korea. CNN was later able to confirm the story, but at the time uh, you heard the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, uh, she wouldn't confirm this information, saying it's classified. She doesn't discuss classified information. Here's the question to you, Senator. Is it appropriate for the president to retweet would clearly uh, in, include some classified information. Wolf, uh, those of us that deal with classified information every day really are not uh, authorized to discuss it, to comment on it, to confirm it, deny it, or anything else. Uh, there's only one person that can do that, and that's the President of the United States. Uh, he has the ability to declassify uh, by simply uttering it. Uh, he does declassify it. Uh, every president has done it. Uh, I saw, we all saw President Obama do it uh, almost a year ago right now when he uh, discussed uh, uh, with the Russians the fact that uh, we knew that the Russians were uh, attempting to interfere with our elections based upon uh, classified information. And uh, he discussed it with them and, uh, and he declassified it and, uh, and had that discussion. It's the job of the President of the United States to use classified information uh, in the most appropriate uh, manner that he deems 
and uh, to use it such that it's in the best interests uh, of, the, uh, of the American people. You're right. The, the President of the United States, uh, he's the only one who can declassify anything he wants. Uh, but the question is, is it appropriate on a sensitive issue like this to, uh, to immediately declassify it, to retweet it, uh, and basically confirm that classified information? He can do it. It's legal for the President, the Commander-in-Chief, to do it. But is it appropriate? I'll let you. Uh, uh, well, you're I'll let on you the for that. But well, Senator, I'm not, I'm you're, on the, I, you're I, on the I don't, intelligence. I don't committee. have to make that decision. I don't have to make that decision because I'm not at liberty to uh, declassify anything. So I don't uh, comment on it. Uh, his decision as to uh, when it's in the best interest of the United States is his decision, and his decision alone. The editorial writers will comment whether he did it uh, correctly or not. Uh, CNN conducted a new poll, and we released it. Only 36 percent of the American public thinks the president is, quote, honest and trustworthy. Uh, does the president, Senator, have a credibility problem right now? Well, uh, look, th those numbers, uh, assuming the, uh, the uh, survey was correct, and we all know that there's horrendous problems with it, probably the same people did that that told us that Hillary Clinton was going to be president. Uh, but, uh, look, if those are the numbers, those are the numbers, and he's going to have to deal with it. The poll also found out uh, only 24 percent of those surveyed believe uh, what they hear from the White House. Uh, the question was, uh, uh, do you trust most of what you hear from the White House? Yes, 24 percent. No, 73 uh, percent. I assume you agree the White House needs to do a better job at being transparent and open and more honest, right? Yeah. Well, there's no question that if those are the numbers that uh, they need to do that better. I, I have the advantage because I, I get information from the White House every day. I get it from people that I know over there, and uh, generally I'm able to cross-examine and find out what the background is. So I, I, I have a different view of it, but I'm in a different position, obviously, than uh, people that are getting their, their news from uh, the Washington Post or CNN or wherever they're getting it from. Well, I, I will point out, uh, Senator, that the national polls leading up to the next election, our national polls, were pretty accurate. Uh, the state polls in Wisconsin, Michigan, some of the other states, Pennsylvania, not so accurate, but the national polls were pretty accurate. Uh, Hillary Clinton did win by three million votes, uh, and that was the percentage, basically, uh, what we were showing. So the, these polls are not necessarily <laughs> all wrong. Go ahead. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, well, the problem with that is it's uh, uh, the states that elect the president. That's correct. The you're you're, vote, you're absolutely you right. Focus it's on. the electoral college. Uh, that's what counts. We were talking yeah. about the national polls, which showed she had an advantage, and she did. She won by three million votes, but that was irrelevant because he won the electoral college, and Donald Trump is now president of the United States. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Wolf, always good to be with you. Thank you very much. Senator James Risch, always good to have you.